Better understand the governor's order on mask mandates. We have Coastal Bend attorney Matt Manning joining us once again. Good morning, Matt. It's so great to have you on. It's been a while since we've seen you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about San Antonio. I know a judge just struck down one of their mask mandates for the San Antonio ISD. Uh, how does that not just sweep across uh, the state? How is it that other districts are still continuing to implement these mask mandates? That's a great question. What you find is that individual school districts are saying, well, unless a court tells me that I can't have my mandate, I'm not going to adhere to that. Um, basically, the school districts are saying that that doesn't have the, the force of law as it relates to precedent to all the school districts. So each one is testing its own uh, mandate in the crucible of the courts. And what you find is that the AG has not brought suit against every school district, but against select few across the state. Um, I think kind of to figure out which forum will allow mandates and which forum will won't, won't allow those mandates. Yeah, we've seen different uh, school districts across the state uh, addressing their dress code in order to implement these mask mandates. You and Barbie previously talked about uh, children with special needs. They're able to use that to better children's health. Uh, but the arguments back and forth, and we know parents are also filing suit and winning in some cases, and I believe that was the case in San Antonio. Uh, as a lawyer yourself, how do you look at this? Is this something that you'd love to be involved in? And, and trying to explain to a judge why you know a governor does shouldn't be able to set health precedents when you have a national vaccine mandate that's underway right now uh, and most likely uh, another mask mandate could come I mean if the cases get worse we're over 600,000 deaths already in children their cases of COVID and hospitalizations are going through the roof right now well in candor I'm a lawyer but I'm also a father and the first thing I think about is the safety of my children so I understand how not only parents but the school districts are struggling with what the epidemiological principles say as opposed to what the governor and others are saying through various you know promulgations of law I think this is a good example of a time where we don't have a clear bright line and the only thing we can do is test it out in the courts I'd be glad to be a part of this litigation because I think it is incredibly important especially where we are in the midst of this pandemic and I think we're going to continue to see people on both sides that are trying to actually, you know, vindicate whatever they think their particular position is. We know right now the CCISD has a mask mandate in place lasting uh, through the end of the month. Uh, crystal ball time. Do you think this is something they could continue to push uh, into the next month if cases do not come down? I think they will, and I think that they will have the justification of we are following scientific principles. Uh, we understand the governor's position, but we're not going to adhere to the law. And frankly, the TEA is not promulgating this, and the governor in, in filings has said that he doesn't believe he has the right to enforce the law that local DAs do. So I think we're really going to have to see how this shakes out in the courts, but I anticipate people will be taking it to court to uh, you know vindicate their rights. Okay, it sounds like one that's more political and not based on science. Uh, Matt, always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you for your time. We know you are busy, and yes, being a father, we know that's a full-time job as well. Uh, we will be checking back in with you as this uh, continues to develop. Matt, again, thank you for your time.